America's Got Talent has done it again. The hit reality competition delivered yet another viral performance, this time from a 65-member blindfolded dance crew that scored Judge Howie Mandel's coveted golden buzzer. The group, called Murmuration, left the panel and audience mesmerized with their hypnotic routine on Tuesday's show, and Howie explained why he felt moved to award them with a fast track to the live rounds. I was mesmerized. I find what you do hypnotic, and I think it's very original, and I find it almost more magnificent when you get a large group of people and the movements are smaller, but perfect, you know? It blew me away. <laughs> Even sitting here, you want to do something. I want to do something. You can, you can come with us. I just want to do, I want to, I like, think. I don't know how to, I want to, I want to. I don't know. Oh! Oh! Howie wasn't the only one impressed with Murmuration's elegant precision. Sofia Vergara shared how the routine reminded her of the act that not only inspired her golden buzzer last season, but went on to win the big prize. I think that kind of uh, synchronization, it's I mean, amazing to me. It's spectacular. Thank you so much. At the beginning, it reminded me of my golden buzzer last year, the Mayas. But you guys have your own style, and I thought it was magnificent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Murmuration appeared understandably overjoyed to receive such high praise, especially temporary leader Gibril Mailot, who filled in for the group's full-time choreographer, Sadek Baraba, who's also his best friend when he fell ill and couldn't travel. You know, dreams come true when you walk out, and I'm really proud of everyone. Howie knows a thing or two about unexpected big breaks. Last year, the comedian joined Mario Lopez and Kit Hoover on Access Daily to share how he found himself as the opening act for a major music superstar in his early stand-up days. I got into this business by accident on a dare and in Toronto, Canada, at a place called Yuck Yucks. But I met a guy yeah. in Toronto. He said, get, uh, I'll get you a spot at the Comedy Store. I got a, he got me a spot at the Comedy Store, which is just a great story to tell. I didn't pursue this business. I know you've been doing it for a long time. This is what you wanted to do. I didn't. Uh, somebody dared me to get on stage. And I don't think things through. So I said, <laughs> OK. I said, OK. And I did no preparation, nothing. And I thought the joke was going to be somebody's going to go, ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mandel. And then there's no reason to introduce Howie Mandel. I'm not right, a comedian. Exactly. So I, I, I did it. And he go, ladies and gentlemen, Howie Mandel. I walked out on stage. And then I notice uh, there's people yeah. <laughs> waiting. And the horror and the terror right. took over. And I didn't know what to do, and I didn't have anything prepared. And if you go on YouTube and you look at old videos of me, I started going, uh, okay, okay, all right, okay, all right, I, okay, all right. And they started giggling at my fear, yeah. and then I so didn't that know that, real. and I was going, what, what, yeah. what, right? Okay, all right, that. okay, what? <laughs> and I put my hands in my pocket, and I carry rubber gloves because yeah. I have OCD, and that's because in case I had to go into a, a public restroom, I didn't want to touch anything. Yeah. And I took out the glove, I had nothing to do, and I just pulled it over my face. <laughs> I was just trying to hide, yeah. and I started breathing, and the gloves going up, and then it popped <laughs> off, the crowd roared, I said goodnight, I walked off, and the guy goes, you gotta come back tomorrow. I go, for what? <laughs> for what? And you incorporate that into your act, I remember that vividly. That was my career. You had the big crocodile like, right here, I, the big alligator. The, the, yeah, Lacoste, it yeah, was like Lacoste, an alligator. I remember that. But the thing is that I, I started, I had nothing. I had nothing, wow, and I bought crazy. a house with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> when did you realize, truthfully, that you had the gift for that? Because it's a talent. You know, I didn't know that. I, I, and I've said this many times. Everything I was ever punished for, got in trouble for, got expelled for is what I started getting paid for. <laughs> I never pursued it. And I didn't, never thought I had a talent. You know, I came out here and I did the Merv Griffin show. Remember Merv yeah, Griffin? Yeah, I love Merv Griffin. I did Griff. the Merv Griffin show. I did it once because they saw me on on, uh, on Make Me Laugh. And then I got a call from Kiss was like the, huge at the time. Yeah, the I band? Got a call, yeah. The, yeah, so I got a call from Gene Simmons. And he goes, I just saw a Kiss. I, I was a kid in Toronto. He goes, I just saw you. Merv Griffin, you're great. You want to be the opening act for my girlfriend? And I go, yeah, oh, okay, who's your girlfriend? Diana Ross. Oh. He was living with Wait, Diana Ross. What? He That's lived a random with Diana fact right there. And I became, I became her opening act at Caesars Palace. Uh, uh, and so the audience hated me every night, but she didn't. <laughs> Jean yeah. and, and her, I just went to her 75th birthday last year. How I still was that? stay in touch. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah.